One of the great pleasures in camping is camp cookery. Open fires are generally speaking not recommended, so for most campers and hikers, it's going to be about using a camp stove. Now they come in many different forms. Uh, there are gas stoves, of course. You also have alcohol stoves. And there are some camp stoves designed to use wood, twig stoves. Uh, there are many different commercial ones available. And a lot of us who do these sorts of activities like making our own stove. I have both. And what we're about to do now in this video is construct what's called a hobo stove. And this is my version of it. And it's designed to be a little bit safer than some of the usual ones we see. And I'll show you in what way and why and how I make it. Stay tuned. Now the stove we're going to be making is made from several different components and this is the first one. This is a utensil holder. It has lots of holes to allow water to drain out of it. But we're actually going to use this as the burn chamber. Uh, this is very similar to the one produced by IKEA and if you look online you will find a very large number of people making what they're referring to as the IKEA hobo stove or the IKEA wood stove and it's based upon this. This one's not made by IKEA. I'm in Wilkinson's now and we're having a look at their version of the utensil holder. Slightly different design. This bottom section and these top handles will be cut off so we're just going to retain the center section. That gets cut off easily with either an angle grinder or a hacksaw and then the sharp edge is smoothed down with a file. So when next you see this it'll be the short bit in the middle. And that's component number two of our stove. So having now taken the base and the top off we're left with this center section from the second piece. And What's nice about this, if we take our first component and our second component, they actually fit together. But this is slightly tapered so that when I push it in, it locks. And if I push it in as hard as I can, uh, it's pretty firm, but we're about to make it a little bit firmer. Although it does look a little like a blaster from Star Wars or some such, it is in fact just a simple trigger clamp with a couple of wooden ends to hold everything in place and it will allow me to compress these two together. And if I just give a couple of squeezes, it tightens it up and that's about it. What it's done is it's taken the base of the inner burn chamber and it's put it to just the bottom or just below the bottom of this next to last ring. And if I take this apart, we'll show you. And there we have it, our stove. Now you may be wondering, why did I use this on the outside? After all, it's increased the weight. And it has increased the weight. And that's deliberate. I wanted to increase the weight. Normally in camping we try to avoid that sort of thing, but it doesn't increase it that much so that it's too heavy to carry. But what it does mean is that although I've lifted the burn chamber about an inch and a half, about mm, four centimeters I'd say, off the ground, which protects the ground from flame, it also increases the weight at the base. Raising it up raises the center of gravity, making it more unstable. But putting extra weight on the base lowers the center of gravity effectively, making it more stable. So this is kind of hard to knock over. In fact, this would need to go in excess of 45 degrees if you were to knock it over. So if you bumped into this and knocked it over 20 or 30 degrees, it will self-right because it has enough weight on the base. Now one thing, if you are familiar with the IKEA hobo stoves that I'm sure you've seen done quite frequently, often people will cut a hole in the side to act as a fuel port. I haven't done that here, and I haven't done it on purpose because 
To be honest, I don't like those holes on the side. To my mind, they're not a good idea. First of all, if I have to lift a pot or a pan off the top of this to drop a bit of additional wood to refuel while I'm cooking, and I have that pot or pan off the fire for anywhere from 5 to 15 seconds, it will make no material difference to the cooking mm, at all. It won't. It simply just it doesn't make any difference. So I don't really mind doing that. I'm quite happy to lift a pot or a pan off of this for a few seconds. But not having that uh, fuel port on the side has a big advantage because when you burn wood, particularly natural wood, which may have sap or whatever contained within it, it can occasionally pop or crack. And when it does that, it can actually shoot a small ember half a meter out in, in some random direction. Now, if it hits the side of this, it's going to stay inside, it stays safe, and it's less of, a, of an issue. If you cut a big hole in the side so you can put sticks in the side, embers can shoot out of there if you get one of those little pops happening. That's potentially quite hazardous. Um, not being a big fan of things that are potentially quite hazardous. I prefer this. It does make it a tad taller, and in terms of storage, yeah, it's a tiny bit taller. It will take up a little bit more space. On the other hand, I'm going to be putting things in with this which will nest inside of it, including nesting in the base. So it's not really going to be an issue. And while it would be a lie to say this is ultralight, it's not. It's not too heavy to carry. While it's not the most compact stove, it's not too bulky to carry either. In fact, I will show you a couple of accessories now that go with this stove to actually make it work well that I've made. And in addition to that, I'll show you the carry pouch that I've made for this, which I think is pretty easy to make. And to be honest, it will actually do a nice job. Uh, the only other thing I would say about this is that we'll be testing it out towards the end of the video. But let's have a closer look at the accessories that make this usable. So we've done a little bit of metal work to go with the stove. To begin with, and most obviously, we have some mild steel flat stock, which has been cut and trimmed and shaped uh, using the angle grinder. Easiest way to do it. These two pieces obviously fit together like so in the middle and then the cross members are placed on top that gives us our that's it that's all we have to do we can now put anything we like on top of there and there will be a nice gap this particular flat stock by the way two millimeters thick by 18 millimeters wide which is something like three sixteenths of an inch if you are working on the imperial system and about 18 mil, I should think that's about three quarter inch or something of that nature. Um, but it does raise the food. It allows the flames to burn and have exhaust gases come out rather nicely. So that's useful. This piece here makes for a very useful trivet. So for example, if I just take a pot here that we might use to cook with, So if I'm using this particular pot on here, and I feel the need to take the lid off, you don't necessarily want to put that on the ground, so you have that little trivet there. Uh, also, this can be used as a lid lifter if, if you're minded. It's multifunctional. It takes up very little space. It doesn't weigh very much at all and it's just made from ordinary round stock. From the same round stock, I've made these two little components. And these are kind of fun, because if you're camping and you're cooking, you may find these rather useful to use. I'm going to put one in, and that's attached like so. By the way, I will point out that there's a tiny little notch that I've put in here. So I've shaped these and I've notched them. If I put the second one in, you may be wondering 
what is the function of these two pieces of metal that I have put together there? Well, I'll show you. Now this piece of equipment works extremely well when used in conjunction with a slice of bread. So imagine I have my eggs cooking for breakfast and I put that piece of bread into this slot and while I'm cooking the bread will toast. Of course there may come a certain point in time when I need to just turn it around like so. But basically these two components turn my hobo stove into a toaster. So at this point I'm going to show you the whole setup as it is now ready to go for camping. Now I've made a bag for it and it's in two parts. We have a top that helps keep everything in and we have our stove and in the bottom we have a few accessories. So. Side, we have our little trivet, our toaster attachments, frying pan, and nested inside of it we have a pot with a lid. And contained inside of there, I've got a double wall mug. All of these uh, pots and pans, by the way, are titanium, so they don't add much to the weight. But as you can see, once everything's actually put inside here, this space is actually required just for the pots and pans. Contained inside the mug, I have a packet that has a dozen fire lighters and a dozen compressed towels so that we can light the fire efficiently and also keep everything clean. And in the very base, or the side actually, we have again in titanium, keeping weight down, fork and a spoon. We have our two cross pieces for the top of the stove and contained inside of this little bag in the bottom is a few accessories to go with this pot. Now this pot originally did not come with this lid. I got this extra. This is the lid that it originally came from. And the reason why I don't normally have it set up with this is to make this multi-purpose. First of all, we have the carry handle, which is useful for taking the out ourselves. So that fits on nicely. This lid is my cafetier lid. And once it's assembled, just put all the parts together. It all screws together very nicely. And this will allow me to use this as a coffee pot for making extremely fresh coffee. But to my mind, to carry that all separately and have another pot for cooking in was ridiculous. So what I did is I found another titanium lid of the same diameter that I could put onto this pot. If I am boiling water with some fresh coffee in there, and by the way, although the coffee isn't in here right now, along with the fire lighters and uh, compressed towels, I would have some fresh coffee in there, but I would do that at the last minute so it would stay very fresh. But I can then just boil water with the coffee inside of it, making effectively a cowboy coffee. And when I'm ready, this lid can be removed, and this one placed on top, and then just plunge down. At that point, 
the coffee is ready to pour and it's completely fresh and it makes this more multifunctional. So I can use this pot both to boil fresh coffee, which is a wonderful luxury to have in the field, or by using it in conjunction with this lid, I can simply cook food in it. All the more reason, by the way, to have the compressed towels because although I can use it for both functions, in fairness, if I don't clean out the food very carefully before I start boiling water in it to make coffee, it will take the flavor of the coffee, which is perhaps a bit obvious. What I'm going to do next is a little demonstration of how this will burn and uh, maybe we might even make us a nice pot of coffee. So we're now going to give it its test burn. Uh, one thing, if I show you the inside, we're using one of my little plug fire lighters, same sort that I would normally stow in the mug. Uh, otherwise, the pieces of wood are, as I say, finger or thumb size. And I would say, oh, what, four or five inches long? Uh, somewhere between, well, let's say give or take in the neighborhood of about 12 centimeter. So we've got the, I've got an empty Frey Bentos pie tin here. I'm using that partially to protect the ground, but also because it's got paint on the underside. And whether or not that paint gets burned or singed or damaged in any way, uh, from the heat from the underside of the stove will tell us a lot about how protected the ground is from this stove being this height. I will say one thing. <coughs> I've seen a lot of these stoves where someone has built legs out of nuts and bolts and washers and it will stand it up at about this height and it's a good thing because it does again protect the ground. The problem is Usually there are three or four legs, which is fine, but they are narrower than the diameter of the burn chamber. Again, making it quite unstable. This, because the burn chamber is inside, which is made from a utensil holder, is inside the skeleton of a larger utensil holder and they're jammed in there together. It does give it a wider footprint. And again, that makes it more stable. And if I do knock it over quite a distance, accidentally, it self-writes. And that is a really good safety feature. And what I'm going to do is light this. Then I have in my pot 500 ml or half a liter of water. I've got some Italian style fair trade roast and ground coffee. This is actually my favorite coffee because it tastes better than any other coffee I've ever tasted. So that's the one I'm having. I've got a bit of milk. I've got a little bit of sweetener. Uh, we're going to put a spoonful of, or a couple of spoonfuls of this into the water once we uh, start bringing it to the boil. And then once we've allowed it to boil for a few minutes, we'll take this off the fire, change lids, and we're ready to go. Also, I have, this is olive bread, and olive bread is lovely, but it's even better when it's toasted. And uh, when the moment comes, we'll be placing that there and toasting that rather nicely. And uh, so we're going to have a nice little snack. But to begin with, we just want to light our fire lighter. Oh, there we go. And uh, with the best will in the world, this will still take a few minutes to get going. But I'm just gonna poke that a little. There we go. That should catch and in just a little while we'll have hopefully a really nice roaring cheery fire to boil our water on. But we're gonna let the wood catch first before we put the pot on to boil.
So this has been burning for about five minutes now. We've got a really good flame, certainly an excellent flame to cook over. And I'm going to put the pot over the fire. And that is a really good cook fire. We're going to have no problem bringing that water to the boil. One thing I would say is that it's virtually smoke free. Um, this is producing less smoke than my wood gas stove. And that's impressive because that's designed to eliminate smoke. So for a homemade stove that cost practically nothing, again, we've added, yes, it's a little bit bulky, but you know what? We have the pot, we have the cup, we have the pan and, and so forth. All of those things take up a certain amount of space. And because they all nest inside, we were going to always take up that much space anyway. But here I have a fire that is held off the ground, is just a really beautiful cook fire. And quite frankly, there's almost no smoke at all. I was actually expecting this to have a lot more smoke than this, but this is working really, really well. All of these ventilation holes are giving it so much oxygen. Now, in fairness, I am using quite dry wood. Uh, so that may be an element of it. In the field, if I'm foraging for my wood, I'll be looking for dead wood that is dry, and by and large, that should be relatively smoke-free. Nevertheless, this is kiln-dried wood, so uh, it's, uh, in a way, a little bit of an unfair test. But the fact that there is so little smoke coming off this is really rather impressive. And in the meantime, the pot is heating up. Uh, there is... Just this beautiful flame engulfing the pot so it's going to there's a little bit of smoke coming off of it now uh, this may be partially because having put the pot on top we are retarding airflow a little bit but again it's a very trivial amount uh, and i suspect it may actually have to do with coatings that are on the stainless steel uh, which are now burning off uh, in fact i think i'm safe in saying that is in fact what little smoke there is coming from here is coming from whatever uh, varnish or coating may have been on that stainless steel initially that is now burning off and to be fair that's a one-time deal uh, once this is burned in we'll never see that particular bit of uh, smoke again but of course the first time you burn anything like this you will get a little bit of that we're outside so there's plenty of free-flowing air I'm not too worried about it and there's not much of it on there it's not like when you uh, burn something that has a lot of paint or a lot of coatings. When you are taking uh, tins and making, uh, for example, using an old coffee can or a soup tin or what have you to make a stove from, the first time you burn that, it'll put out a lot of toxic smoke uh, simply because it has a lot of protective coating on it to protect the food. This has much less by way of protective coating on it, so we're not seeing so much of an issue from that. But this would be a really nice cheery campfire all in its own right and again off the ground and at least so far I see no indication of any kind of heat damage to the underside the painted underside of the uh, of the pie tin early days yet but I suspect we'll go on as we've started with that I've got a rolling boil already. I thought it would take longer. Uh, this is extremely hot, so we're going to take it off the fire. Like that. And now we'll move this pot lid. And I think it's time to add the coffee. good heaping spoon of coffee which will end up in a nice rolling boil in no time. And we will give that a 
few minutes to boil. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, perhaps perhaps a little better without the lid on because that rolling boil was rather more of a rolling boil than I was looking for. Uh, it's partially extinguished off fire because we've got some wet coffee in there. It's putting out a bit of steam right now, but we'll just call that simmer mode. You live and you learn. And that is, oh, that is trying to boil way over again. So this is super duper hot. And what I would say is it demonstrates that you do not have to do not have to worry about not having enough heat coming out of this because there isn't a big hole in the side uh, right now just holding it above I would say this is actually quite a good argument for having uh, something of a tripod to use with this because you may want to have instances where you have it a little higher off the heat but this thing does produce an awful lot of heat of course I did fill it with wood it's uh, certainly arguable that I might have been just fine putting less wood in this but this really is some hot liquid and again that was half a liter uh, which is a deal of water and it didn't take long to boil at all and it is on to rolling boil already and frankly I hope the camera can see this, but this is almost volcanic. That is really a good boil, and I think that's probably had more than enough. I'm going, I thought I would need more time, but I'm going to just put my piece of bread there. We're going to make our toast real quick. This is, this is not a stove for the faint of heart, I have to say. This is something that if you have a big pot and you want a lot of heat, uh, of course, again, you can let it burn down a bit, or you can put a little bit less fuel in it to begin with. And say with all, as with all things, it's a bit of a learning curve. This is the inaugural burn of this stove. Uh, it's one thing to design something in your head. It's another thing to test it out. And uh, this stove will obviously give me a very good fire when I need one but I don't need half as much wood as I thought I would because it burns so jolly, jolly efficiently, which again, pretty much no smoke. I've got, what is that, at least a foot tall fire, 30 centimeter. Uh, I've got me some nice coffee here. I don't think I need to actually do anything more with that except plunge it. bit on the warm side. Let that cool for a second. So this is a fresh cup of coffee. The ins you know, it's not this instant stuff on this occasion, although we will use an artificial sweetener because I gotta watch my sugar. Um, and a little bit of fresh milk because powdered milk and fresh coffee is just that that should actually be punishable by a jail sentence. I'm only saying, you know I'm right. Uh, but. has given me about as fresh a cup of coffee as one can hope for. Uh, this mug, by the way, is 330 mil in capacity. It's almost completely full right now. 
So we've got to figure there's about 300 mil in there. Uh, it's double walled titanium with obviously butterfly handles, so takes up no space, takes up no weight, but keeps that coffee hot. And my goodness, that's good coffee. Um, no doubt about it. I think actually using this, I might next time want to put the toast component a little bit higher up because there seems to be more heat up here and less down there. But I suppose if you're toasting slowly, that'll be fine. There's no way I can actually pull those out and reposition them now with my bare hands. I'll simply burn myself if I do that. But uh, yeah, we have us a very old fashioned cup of coffee, a beautiful campfire, by the way. If you are camping and you want to keep your fire off the ground, but you want a traditional campfire, a stove like this, frankly, it gives you a really nice traditional style campfire in a very meaningful sense. Less smoke than I've seen from almost any other wood burning stove I've ever used, which is nice. Obviously, it can cook food nice and quickly. Uh, you can let it burn down. There will be coals at the bottom of that when it burns down, and then you can add the wood. In fact, actually, this piece of wood here, which I would say is about four inches long, which would be 12 centimeters, 12 and a half. Uh, to be fair, I could probably cut these in half. Dropping them into the top, uh, I think really I, I only needed to half fill that. I filled it completely, but I didn't need to. And if I take my uh, next bit of wood, make them no more than finger length and finger thickness, uh, and then just drop them in as needed, just to prevent it from burning out completely. I think it'll give a smaller, more gentle flame. As you can see now, the flyer is consumed a lot of the wood that was in there, so it is burning down a little bit. Um, and a lot of the pieces of wood are breaking down. They're not going to they're not going to give a bad fire, you know, as as, a, as smaller pieces. And in fact, it'll be I think a little bit more controllable by having smaller pieces in there, maybe only half filling the thing. Uh, I filled this up to full capacity to see what it would do and. Boy, it was terrible. But uh, half filling it with smaller pieces, it'll give you just a good flame to cook on, no problem. And again, smaller pieces as well for keeping it going. Uh, I don't really see this as being a bad choice any day of the week. I would, I would take this camping with me quite regularly because this does give a nice fire. If you put bigger pieces in there, you get a proper old-fashioned kind of campfire. It is dying back a little bit now, but that's, um, again, partial, oh, that was good quote. <laughs> it is partially a function of good coffee and fresh toast. Hmm. And you can keep the toast warm. Uh, quite honestly, the smaller pieces of wood will burn out a little bit sooner. So if you're not trying to have a fire that's going to last for hours, uh, this is great. You, it's gonna, you're going to cook on it, no problem. You'll boil water on it, no problem. You'll cook food on it, no problem. Now the flames are pretty much fine out, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to drop this piece in, and uh, just to check out how nicely that will light because obviously when you're dropping extra pieces of wood in there, you want them to ignite. But you have this really hot bed of coals at the bottom. Same as you might have in a fireplace. If you put really any dry piece of wood, or even only slightly damp piece of wood on a really hot bed of coals, that'll push the moisture out of it. And again, you've got your flame pretty good. But I think actually I would prefer smaller pieces of wood next time, because clearly I can drop them into the different quarters and really control the positioning of my flame. Right now, this piece of wood, I'd say, is probably too long. But uh, again, 
this is why we test this stuff out because once you tested it out well, that was good. once once you've tested it out you know what to expect and then you can learn the best way of using your equipment this is this is something I would urge you to do when you have equipment sometimes it's not so crazy break it out in the garden test it out if there were little idiosyncrasies how are you to know until you've tested it out once you've tested it out it's like for example with this I know that I need to set up some kind of either tripod or just set up a tripod it's not hard I only need to cut three pieces of wood it's a bit of bushcraft uh, I'll get a small chain with a hook that I can actually set up to that and then I can have my pot held over the fire if needs be to lower the temperature to make it boil a little bit more gently instead of having to sit it directly on top. You don't know how efficient your stove is till you test it. So you don't know if you need a tripod. Now I realize I do. But that also opens all kinds of other possibilities. For example, one of the bits of kit that I made for myself previously, which I do use with a tripod that I also made, a bit of, bit of the blacksmithing. Uh, I have a special, and I'll, I'll do it in a subsequent video, I have a special skewer that is designed to attach to a tripod which will hold the meat horizontal and you can rotate it on that skewer while it's roasting and you can make yourself a good roast beef. Uh, and obviously that would be usable with this. Incidentally, as I look underneath, I can see on the paint uh, the paint is undamaged all we have down there is a bit of a stain from the coffee when it boiled over uh, but that obviously drained out and obviously whatever moisture was there has been uh, gotten rid of but the paint on the Fray Bento's tin is not being damaged so it does suggest that you're not going to kill the soil underneath this thing when you're burning it and it does keep it contained and again because we didn't put a uh, fuel port on the side that does mean that if we do get a little piece of wood popping uh, it's not going go home man uh, it's not going to pop out and eject itself to somewhere where it could be inconvenient either starting a small fire or possibly even just landing on a piece of kit and burning it uh, you could damage equipment that way so it's something you want to be careful about Again, that one piece of wood burned for all that time I was talking, and I do apologize for talking for so long. I would say if I had a grill rack I could put on top of that, the heat this thing is giving off is amazing. There's certainly enough heat in those coals. I could cook a hamburger on that with a little grill on top of it if I were minded to. So, again, there's a lot of versatility here. We can, as you can see, toast bread. make coffee clean this pot out I can cook a stew in it put a grill on top of that I can cook a hamburger or a steak there's just a lot of versatility here a lot of convenience you saw how small the package was no it's not the smallest package it's not the lightest package, but it's not too heavy to carry, and it's not too bulky to pack in your bag. And it does give you a really good way to contain a really good fire. And in the end, cook your eggs, make your coffee, toast I mean there is an old joke that the definition of camping is someone going out spending thousands to live like a homeless person this 
Well, the titanium cost a, a little bit, but it wasn't that expensive. And because I've turned this into a multi rather than buying two pots, I bought two lids in one pot. Uh, it wasn't really that expensive. The stove itself, the metal that I bought, um, and the stuff, I, I don't think I, I, I probably spent no more than a tenner making that stove. Normally it wouldn't be sitting on that tray, but it, you could. You could bring that along. You could put it the other way up, catch any ashes that might drop out. Or use that as a plate if you wish. Doesn't matter. You do, you're not. It's not going to damage the ground. I can see that now because it's held up a good. It's over an inch off the ground and you know about four centimeters off the ground. It is nice. We're not hurting the ground. We're not needing an overabundance of fuel. It cooks really well. It's versatile. What more can you ask for? Anyway, I hope you found this interesting, and if you're interested in making one like this, have a go. I can honestly recommend it. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next video. If you like this, please click like. If you uh, press the bell icon, you'll see the next video as well. And I would say share, you know, share, like, subscribe because we do like getting people to subscribe. Apart from anything else, if you are interested in this particular topic, do feel free to leave a comment, and we will very, very happily look at making videos that you want me to make, because, after all, uh, this is sort of a collaborative effort. If I'm making this and no one's watching it, it's not much use to me or anyone else. And if you're watching this and I'm not covering the content that you want, just tell me and I'll happily look into it and do what I can. Anyway, I hope to see you again soon. Have a good one.